We're back here for day two of our fiberglass work in our workshop here in Milwaukee. We did a little bit of our board work yesterday and we're gonna peel off this tape and see what the fiberglass underneath looks like now to figure out how much grinding we have to do to take some of that off before we put some of the gel coat on. We're gonna come in here, pull this tape off. This blue tape is really good for fiberglass work, especially when you're working in kind of weird shapes because you, it, it conforms to whatever you've put under there and it doesn't stick to the glass for the most part. Sometimes you see it sticking. It looks like this stuff is coming off okay here. So I'm unboxing this for the first time here and as I'm taking it off, what I wanna look for is full adhesion here where I've put the glass on and so you know from what I see it actually looks pretty good here I don't know what the other side looks like yet but I don't see any any spots where there are bubbles in the glass that I've put on here at all I've built it up enough that I can take this off to give the shape back to the centerboard here uh, and smooth these sides out before we add a little bit of gel coat back to the tip but I don't see the cavities that were formed in the tip of the board from repeatedly striking the bottom um, or the dollies. And so that cavity got filled. That was a primary concern here, making sure that the, the filler in the middle um, doesn't get waterlogged. And so we've filled that back up. And I don't think I'll have to do any more glass work on this. I think we can go ahead and move to grinding and then put some gel coat on. All right, so we're gonna get into our grinding here on this center board, and we're using a lot of the same tools that we did last time. We've got all of our earmuffs, eyewear, and respirator, and we'll have a blower moving the air out of here. Uh, and we're gonna start with just this grinder with a flap disc on here for the big abrasive work, and then we'll switch to the sanding disc, a little bit finer grit on here to do a little bit more of the shaping up in close. So before we take off any more, because this is a pretty coarse disc, we're gonna switch down to uh, just a sanding disc but with a much finer grit paper on it before we take off too much more. All right, so we've taken this down mostly to shape. You can still see there's some flat spots here. Uh, that's okay because this cavity is actually filled. If I wanted to take another 
pass with some fiberglass to round this out a little bit more, I could. Um, but I'm okay with this final shape here. We'll take another pass with our orbital sander that we'd use for the gel coat to smooth it out before we put on our gel coat. here we took this down uh, past the gloss on this old gel coat here so that we can put our new gel coat on without me having to go back in and grind it so I've taken off maybe about an inch of that top layer of gloss that was on the old gel coat all the way around here you know this is pretty smooth uh, I might come back in with a piece of hand sandpaper uh, and try to round this edge especially right here a little bit more this is the leading edge of our uh, center board and so I want to make sure that's pretty smooth it doesn't make a major difference at the end of the day for a boat like this uh, but I do want to make sure that I do uh, as good a job as I can with the glass that I put on there that's better All right, blockheads, we're now gonna do the final step for this centerboard repair, which is apply our gel coat here. I pre-mixed some gel coat, uh, and it's actually been sitting for a couple of minutes to get to the right viscosity because we're applying to a vertical surface here. Really have to worry about sag. I've over-taped here, um, and we'll apply it in really thin coats this time, and might have to do a couple of different passes to get it to the right thickness, but because it's a vertical surface, a little bit more aware of how much it sags. So a couple of things happened right there. We actually waited just long enough to do this that the gel coat started to gel as I was going. So 
I wanted to wait long enough that it wouldn't sag, but we right at the end of our clock for the, for the shelf life, for the use life of the gel coat. This is what it looks like as it starts to gel. You don't often get to see this part of the process because it's spread out already. But once it starts to kick, this will have a hard time spreading, have a hard time adhering. So we went kind of quick, uh, put it on pretty thick on this side because I noticed it was starting to gel. Um, this will be hard and tacky within a couple of minutes. You can see already it's having a hard time uh, spreading out here. The other thing is we're using recycled foam brush cores to spread this stuff out. Uh, and that's good. I'm trying to cut down on the amount of waste that we get out of here. I'm not using a brand new foam brush every time. Uh, I prefer foam brushes just because of the consistency. And if you're using like a spreader like this, a scraper, you might have a hard time getting a level surface, especially on a, on a vertical surface like we just did, uh, and especially in a small surface where I'm not spreading it out and doing a couple of passes. Well, this worked out okay. Gel coat is self-leveling, and so it'll, it should turn out pretty smooth at the end of the day. We'll take a sanding pass and call it good. You can see, even as I'm talking, this gel coat has, uh, has fully kicked.